What's been done right now in Kashi is a great blessing. I actually told the Prime Minister, Kashi is one thing that will be remembered forever. Kashi is not a place of faith. Kashi literally means the Tower of Light. There is no better place for a human being to mature. Aleppo city was built 8,000 years ago. Shepherds there and the shepherds in Madhya Pradesh are exactly the same people. My understanding is there are three old civilizations. The Chinese civilization, along the Yangtze River, the, um, I'll talk about Egyptian, Mesopotamia, Euphrates, Tigris rivers, and there is the Indian civilization or the Indus Valley civilization. I am not aware, and I am, don't want to put this in a, in a context which appears chauvinistic or anything. I am not aware of any of the other two civilizations having succeeded what we have succeeded and I am not because you are blessing us this evening. You take a city like Varanasi which is a 1000 year old uh, city. Not 1000 sir. No, much older, much older. See, at the time of Adiyogi Shiva, he wanted to go to Kashi. So, if he wants to go to Kashi, his time, there is a lot of debate about it, but nothing is less than 15,000. Exactly. So, I'm, I, I meant 1,000 not in the sense that I'm circumscribing at 1,000. I said the structures there which you see now, yes. the visible structures are 1,000. Yes. 1,000. Yes. I said you are trying to convert that into a smart city where the structures are 1,000 years old. That's smart. No, that's smart, but... The, no, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. if you can build a building that lasts for a thousand years, you're smart. Well, my worry is that, for instance, in a, we want to make a smart city anywhere. If it's an area-based development, like, let's say, a new city or new Delhi, you take an area, define limits, etc., and you convert everything there smart. What happened? Use of technology, proper sustainability, ecolo ecology, and so on. We couldn't dig there because you're very worried that you would, you know... You dig anywhere, they're a precious thing. They're a precious thing. So when we, when the uh, Honorable Prime Minister was building that faith corridor, I remember some of my friends in the press, he's in my common friend, they used to say he's undertaking a, such a risky task that this will go wrong, that will go wrong. You know, he's taking his political reputation. I went there when it was done. Nothing happened uh, from one place to another. No destruction was unneeded. You have faith and you have confidence in your ability. That's why you are able to take a city which is 15,000 years old or, or less. And today you give it the trappings of a modern smart city. Where else in the world has that been done? I would like to look at it in a different way. What's been done right now in Kashi is a great blessing, there's no doubt at least there is a decent place to go to. I went to Kashi for the first time only twelve years ago because I never went in search of any spiritual places. For me, if I close my eyes, my life is settled. I don't have to look for anything. I never went to any so-called pilgrim places or whatever. Twelve years ago I went because I have read and heard so much, I wanted to see. So when I went there and it was an experience for a variety of reasons, <laughs> so the media came and asked me, what do you think for the first time you're in Kashi, what do you think? I said, Kashi is fabulous and filthy. He said, you're saying it's filthy? I said, yes, it's fabulous and filthy. If you remove the fa filth, it'll be just fabulous. Fortunately, that's largely happening today. We can't say it's fully happened, significantly happened, no question about that. About city being smart is fine with me, but we must understand Kashi was a place we, where we manufactured truly smart people. Ultimately, people have to be smart. Cities are smart, phones are smart, Absolutely. dumb idiots, what do you do with them? <laughs> Give them a smartphone. <laughs> See, because essentially we will call 
We will call something or somebody smart only if they are smarter than us, isn't it? You'll say this is a smartphone, because it's smarter than you in some way. <laughs> You'll say this man is smart, because you find he's smarter than you, otherwise you wouldn't call that. If he was less smarter than you, you will say he's a fool. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> I was using it more in the sense of... No, no, I, I understand why you're saying that and I understand what is the purpose of what's being done. I'm saying it's one of the... I actually told the Prime Minister this, you're doing so many things for the country, many, many things. But Kashi is one thing that will be remembered forever, ever, forever. After thousand years, if you come also, this opening up this corridor is one thing that will be celebrated for always. You use the word faith, I would like to dissociate myself with faith. Faith is a very Middle Eastern word which is spread across the world. Here, we always valued knowing. Our effort is to know, not to believe. This is not a land of believers, this is a land of seekers, always. See, for thousands of years, we've been trading with uh, West Asia, for example. Aleppo city was built 8,000 years ago. That city was built on the basis or on the value of what taxes were levied on the Indian traders. From that, they built a whole city, tax city, it is tax gate for Indians. Just imagine what is the volume of trade that should be happening to build a whole city based on taxation. Initially, they were bandits who were looting them. Then they came to their senses, what is the point looting and destroying the business? The best thing is to tax them. They started taxing them. Bedouin uh, tribes, they learned taxation and with taxes they built big cities. Uh, Palmyra and Aleppo, both were built like this. It was a very interesting drive for me. I drove from uh, Beirut to Damascus and, uh, you know, Iraqi border and this, all these things because uh, I wanted to go through that Indian route where they went. It's, it's so incredible, some things. This is before the Syria war and... Just before. Just before. Now uh, that Aleppo, if when you look at it, tears will come. They've made it into rubble. What a beautiful city it was, you know. Uh, so when I travel like this, the connection, even the genetic connection is so strong. Because when people travel for business, when you're walking 3,000, 4,000 kilometers, not everybody will come back, you know. Not everybody will come back because it's not a plane ride. You just go and maybe you'll find a wife or a husband there and settle down, things happen. You won't believe the shepherds there and the shepherds in Madhya Pradesh are exactly the same people. You will see in India the shepherds who bring these goats and sheep across South India and come back every year, that's their routine. Now it's come down significantly. Earlier they used to walk down. I was so fascinated, these guys used to come and camp in my farm near Mysore. I, I was in a very remote farm. So these guys will come with 2,000, 3,000 sheep. These two thousand, three thousand sheep are immense value, only two guys. They're just carrying daggers all the time. I was so inspired by these guys, because I have trekked, I have been in jungles by myself, I can survive just about anywhere by myself without any outside support, no food, no nothing, I can survive in a jungle. But these guys were so organized, every day new, you know, babies are being delivered. They're carrying twelve to fifteen little babies for first three days. And then as they can walk, they'll put them down and they'll walk. If they come and stay in your farm for two nights, your farm is fully fertilized, okay? It's an incredible thing, this is how they traveled. So they always had a yellow-colored ring in their eyes. And I go to Syria and I'm driving, and I see one goat herd going like this, and he looks at me, hello coloring, I stopped right there. I, I went up to him, I had a Lebanese person with me and uh, she, uh, you know, he started talking and asked, where is he from, what is he and all this. So we asked, uh, are you from India? At any time, have you heard these stories? He said, no, 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 my forefathers have talked about meeting wise men in India and coming back, but we are not Indian, we belong to Syria. But exactly same ring, yellow colored ring. So genetically also, there is such an exchange happening for thousands of years. So in all this, 
In Lebanon, the Baalbek temple is a place where 4,300 years ago, every Lebanese child reads about it, that Indian workers, Indian sculptors, Indian elephants came and worked to build Baalbek temple. Certain foundation stones are 400 tons. Elephants brought them up the hill and they did this. And where are elephants in Middle East, in West Asia? They're Indian elephants which went there and worked. But our children have never been informed about it because we don't want to talk about any great exploits that our people have ever done, all right? So when these things were happening, the even at that time, they referred to us as Hind. Even today, because Hindustan is short word is Hind. Even today, there are thousands of women, both in Lebanon, Syria and even some in Israel, whose name is Hind, first name is Hind. It's fashionable to have the name Hind because it was an aspiration for everybody to do, go to that magical country which was rich, wealthy, prosperous, intelligent and above all, they had a knowing. The knowledge was so deep. So our, for us, knowing is important, not faith. At a given time, we were over up to 600 nations at a time politically in this country. But still, even people from outside saw us as one nation because this was the only, we were the only strange creatures who did not have a belief system. We did not believe in absolutes. We believed in seeking, that you must seek, you must know. This is it, that is it, doesn't exist. Even when so-called divine entities came in this country, all they got was a debate. They could not ever deliver commandments to us. See, uh, <laughs> uh, Adi Yogi Shiva comes, his wife freaks him with questions, endless number of questions. Krishna comes, he's a popular man even in his time, but he dares to actually speak profound things only with one guy. He comes with hundreds of questions. So, no commandment was ever possible because this is a land of seeking. We never believed anything. This is the fundamental difference between this you know, cultural nation and the rest of the world, we are not people of faith. Spirit of inquiry. We are people of seeking. We want to know. Well, already it's said in this book, somebody said that, Rama said this, Krishna said this, it doesn't matter. We respect them, but we still have to know our own truth. This is the basis of our existence. We should never give it up. Kashi is not a place of faith. Kashi, people went because it was a place of knowing. That's the reason why they went. Kashi drew people from across the world, known world of that time. People came in search of that. Because it was, not probably, it was the place of learning and knowing. There was no such one concentrated place anywhere on the planet at that time. So naturally it drew. I like the way Mark Twain uh, defined Kashi. He said, uh, it is older than the legend. It was there uh, when Rome was not thought of. It was there when Egypt did not exist. It was there well before that. There is a beautiful poem that Agastya Muni wrote. So, uh, Agastya Muni and some of the Saptarishis along with uh, Adiyogi are in Kashi. After staying in a city like that, there was no city like that. They elogized this city. There is no city like this in the world and all that stuff. Then Adiyogi says, uh, tell to Agathya Mani, you must go south, you must spread my word there. So before leaving Kashi, he cries and he writes a poem, a long poem, how he is going to miss this place. He's not saying he's going to miss Shiva, he's missing the city. <laughs> he writes a long poem saying how his heart is going to bleed moving away from the city and how wonderful it is. And uh, it is, there is no better place for a human being to mature. They say every street had ten enlightened beings at that time. Every street had various kinds of knowledge and knowing. Well, that has been replaced by now traditions and this and that. And we know all the havoc that's happened in the place. But still it's a tremendous, energetically tremendous place because the word Kashi literally means the Tower of Light. Light does not represent faith, light represents clarity and knowing.